Before we start the show, we're going to have Emily Sloan Pace, who's worked with us as our dramaturg on this show, talk to you a little bit about Hamlet. I'm Leslie Curry, or Soraya Keating. We've had the great privilege of directing this play. We've been working with the men since August to um, practice for today. So um, thank you for joining us. We'll say a few more introductions in a little bit, but we have a little pre-show entertainment. Uh, Emily, thank you. Shakespeare studies, and so I just want to, uh, you know, kind of introduce you to the play a little bit. This was written, uh, sort of originally performed in 1601, and it's written in 1603. There are a couple of different versions of the text that we know as Shakespeare's Hamlet. Um, there's some short performance versions, there's a longer, more full-length version. This is kind of a version in between. If you were going to perform every line that's written in Hamlet, it would be over four hours long. Um, in Shakespeare's day, they didn't have intermissions, so that would be a long time for you as an audience member to be either sitting, if you were lucky enough to have the money to buy a seat, or to stand, which is what most of the people would have been doing. Um, so I wanted to just sort of generally open the floor up to any questions people might have about the play. How many people have read or seen the play? Great! See, this is fantastic. And I think the fact that three quarters of the room have some familiarity with this text points to its relevance um, in society. This is the most written upon text in the English language. Uh, every year, something like 400 articles or books are published on Hamlet. The runner-up for the most written upon text in the English language is another Shakespeare play, Othello. Uh, which is a great one that hopefully one day we'll do here as well. Um, so, you know, this is a play that has a lot of cultural resonance. Uh, there's a famous poet that said, because of Hamlet, the world grew sad. Um, after its performance in England, people started wearing all black because that's what Hamlet wears in the play. So it had a lot of popular uh, influence during the time it was written as well as continuing to today. This is one of the most frequently performed plays in the world. There's probably another dozen productions going on right now um, as we speak. And in London, where the Olympics are getting ready to be held this summer, they've been doing all sorts of uh, Shakespeare plays. They've actually put on every single play that Shakespeare wrote over the last six weeks in London. So Hamlet was among them. Um, so yeah, are there any questions that people have about the play? Yeah. That's a great question. Why is Shakespeare so popular? Well, I like to think that one of the reasons Shakespeare is so popular is because it speaks to the human condition, right? We see love, we see jealousy, we see death, we see joy, um, all throughout Shakespeare. And that's one of the things that really engages us as readers. I think one of the other reasons that makes Shakespeare so appealing is that it's all about the human body in a lot of ways. There are tons of fart jokes in Shakespeare. You may not think it's true, but there are. There are lots of sex puns in Shakespeare. This is a text that's all about what it means to be human, right? And the processes we go through as humans from birth to death. Um, other questions? Yeah. Why does Hamlet say Denmark is a prison? Why does Hamlet say Denmark is a prison? Um, that's a great question. And you know that's a line that has a lot of resonance. Um, I think Denmark is a prison to Hamlet because he is feels trapped in this space, right? He feels trapped physically by the constraints of being a prince. He feels trapped intellectually. Hamlet is a college kid. He wants to go back to Wittenberg, to Germany, and go back to college and having fun. But he's stuck here in Elsinore, having to confront the reality that his father has been murdered by his uncle, and that he has been deemed the one by fate, essentially, to set this crime right, right, to sort of, uh, to fix things. Other questions? 
was only the son of a glove maker, couldn't possibly have the kind of insight into what it means to be human, into court politics, into world history, um, to have possibly done the kind of great work that he has done. And I really disagree with that. I think, you know, we all, that Shakespeare, just like all of us, you know, um, was able to see the world for something larger. And he had a fantastic education. Um, his grade school education, as we put it, would be akin to getting a BA from a top university. He knew Latin, he knew Greek, would have studied lots of history. Um, and so the idea that Shakespeare didn't write Shakespeare is one that's really based in class and economics. And this idea that someone who's poor and you couldn't possibly do the great things that he did. Thank you so much to Emily Sloan Pace, yeah. who, uh, as you know, she's a PhD candidate, about to get her PhD in Shakespeare, and she's been a fabulous help with our Shakespeare program this year. So thank you so much, Emily. And with great excitement, I want to welcome you all to our production of Hamlet this year. My name is Soraya Keating, and I'm one of the directors of this show, along with Leslie Courier of Marine Shakespeare Company. And I am just so grateful to you all for coming to witness our performance. You know, in the years of my acting training and also my psychology training, probably the greatest learning I keep getting is the value of witnessing and the value of listening. So it's your listening that really makes magic possible. So thank you for being here to listen. Um, one thing I really love about Hamlet, and maybe Emily talked about this a little bit, um, is the way that Hamlet brings to consciousness all the shadow themes in our lives. Hamlet is bounding, bursting with themes of betrayal, revenge, hatred, suicidality, being imprisoned in one's own mind, all of that stuff that we struggle with as human beings. And in my years of acting and being in the world, I've noticed that when we let ourselves stand in reflection to that shadow and we really give it space to witness it, then we can be with our shadow in a new way. We can actually be a choice rather than be a slave to our shadows. So my hope is today with this performance of Hamlet, we can all stand in witness to this shadow aspect of human nature and and together we ways of transforming it when we bring that magic of embracing our shadow we can transform things like anger into compassion or greed into generosity or hopelessness into hope or fear into love so my vision is with this performance we can really do some magic and turn the love of power into the power of love. So that's a quote. <laughs> I don't know who first said that, but thank you for being here today. Um, there's so many people to thank for this performance. I think I'm going to let Leslie do the thank yous. They're innumerate. Um, and with great pleasure, I introduce you to the woman who founded this program at uh, San Quentin the director of Marine Shakespeare Company, Leslie Currier. Thank you, Soraya. This is the eighth year of Shakespeare at San Quentin. It's a labor of love for us at Marine Shakespeare because we learn so much and grow so much doing this program and working with these men. Hamlet is not the first play we would have chosen to do as a full-length performance at San Quentin Prison with an inmate cast. And the only reason that we are doing this show today is because the men in this company, the core group of actors, have built up their skills and their confidence and their abilities to the point where we said, let's tackle Hamlet. <laughs> It takes a lot of courage for these. It takes a lot of courage for these men to decide to participate in a program where they could be asked to wear a dress or 
um, uh, pretend to kill someone on stage, or do any number of things, and they have to learn what all these funny words mean that Shakespeare wrote. Uh, they are courageous, they are, have worked very, very hard, and we're so happy to share, uh, to share the fruits of this labor with you today. Soraya Keating uh, is, a, is a fabulous theater artist. She's also a trained drama therapist. She's a fabulous partner, and she's allowed me to be her partner in directing this show. Uh, Emily Sloan Pace, you saw earlier, is getting her PhD in Shakespeare Studies from UC Santa Cruz, having her in the room to help uh, teach what, the, what this play means was fabulous over the course of the year. And you'll see two women in the cast who are studying uh, to get a master's degree in drama therapy. They've done an internship with us for the past three or four months, and they're playing Gertrude and Ophelia in the play. Uh, beyond that, this program would not exist without the staff here at San Quentin, which does so much to support this program. The paperwork involved in getting you, our guests, into the prison today is has been driving Laura Goldman, Steve Emmerich, and Corey Georgeson crazy, I'm sure, for the past month. And we appreciate so much all the support that they've given us, uh, as well as everyone who's given us. All of the guards, all of the, the people who, the, the warden, the captain, everyone who has extra work to do to allow programs like this to exist, um, we really appreciate it because programs like this are correctional for the Department of Corrections. You know, they're, these are important programs. Um, there are many, many programs here at this prison. And um, we also thank the William James Association, which uh, has helped fund this program for the last three years and helps fund a prison arts program here and in other prisons around the country. They are leaders in the field of arts and correction, which is a, a, a shrinking field. Um, so thank you so much for your support. And I think, I think we'll start the show now. This, we're going to do the play in just under two hours. There's no intermission, and at the end of the play, there will be a question and answer session where you can ask our actors about their experiences uh, in this play. Come on out, actors! Laertes, who's come back uh, from where he's studying in college in France. 
Laertes' sister is Ophelia. She's Hamlet's girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> does not like Hamlet's attitude. The kid's being morose. He's being sullen. What's going on with this guy? Um, Polonius, says, Polonius says to his daughter, honey, this guy's a prince. He's above your stars. He's never going to marry you. He has to marry a princess. He can't just marry anyone. You have to break it off with him. And then he goes to the king and he says, I know what's wrong with Hamlet. I know why he's feeling so bad. It's because he's heartbroken. It's love. My daughter broke his heart. That's why he's acting so nuts. Claudius doesn't really believe this. So Claudius, um, well, first what happens is that, <laughs> is that Laertes says, hey, can I go back to college now that the funeral's over? And the king says, yes, sure. But um, his, uh, uh, Laertes' dad, Polonius, He's a kind of sneaky guy. So he has Osric, a courtier, go after Laertes and spy on him. It's just that kind of a world, you guys. Uh, and then the king, the king invites two of Hamlet's friends from college to come to town, Rosencrantz and Gillingster. And he asks them to spy on Hamlet and find out why Hamlet's acting so weird? Well, there are palace guards at this, in this palace, the palace of Elsinore in Denmark. And one night, the, another, another, of, uh, another of Hamlet's friends has come to Elsinore for the funeral, Hamlet's best friend, Horatio. <laughs> One night, the palace guards say to Horatio, a strange thing has been happening. We saw a ghost on the battlements, on the walls of the castle. It's the ghost of Hamlet's father, the dead king of Denmark. <laughs> Is this true? Is it really the dead king's ghost? Maybe it's just a devil come from hell to try to torture us. But the ghost tells Hamlet something. He says to Hamlet, the king, Claudius, killed your father, poisoned him in the garden by pouring poison into his ear. Revenge your father's murder. Kill the king. How's Hamlet going to do that? Well, one day, some players, a troop of actors, arrive at Elsinore. Come on out, guys. And Hamlet, is a, Hamlet comes up with a great idea. He says, I'm going to have the actors put on a play, kind of like the murder of my father, but I'm going to have them put on a play where, where someone pours poison into someone's ear and kills them. I'm going to see how Claudius reacts to that. Then I'll know if the ghost was telling the truth or not, and I'll know whether or not I should revenge his death. There's also a priest. 